Welcome in Niners faithful. So another one by the dust, another Photoshop edit by the fan base is put on ice as Stefan Gilmore is officially traded to the Carolina Panthers. The reason for doing this video here is Jose and I were talking about it. Did the Niners miss the boat by not making a more aggressive push for Stefan Gilmore? And you mentioned those edits, those died out pretty quickly because right after, uh, it seemed almost just a couple hours after New England said that they were about to release him, that's when Carolina uh, was able to uh, get their hands, unfortunately, on Stephon Gilmore. Uh, but I think, yes, uh, to answer your question, I think the 49ers did miss on a pretty key opportunity here to bolster up that very kind of dwindling and weak secondary that we've been able to to see the past couple of weeks. And that's not a, that that's no fault of the players that are currently on the roster right now. It's just that it's just banged up. They're, the position itself has just been super banged up. The cornerback position, especially in that secondary, has been banged up ever since week one uh, when we lost Jason Barrett. Um, but a guy like Stefan Gilmore, obviously we haven't seen him play in quite some time, but at the end of the day, he's still a four-time Pro Bowler and a, and a two-time first-team All-Pro. And probably when he was playing and when Tom Brady was still in New England, he was probably the best cornerback, the best shutdown cornerback in the entire league. You could basically line him up against any other wide receiver one in the league, and he at least – you know, would make it difficult for that wide receiver to get open. And it would be, it would make it difficult, difficult for the opposing offense uh, to get the ball to their number one uh, wide receiver, which is exactly what the Niners need um, at the cornerback position. Unfortunately, there are other teams that probably needed him a little bit more. Carolina was probably one of them. <laughs> yeah. Carolina though, speaking of that, this isn't the only cornerback move that Carolina has made in the last week. They also traded for CJ Henderson for a bag of peanuts and a tight end. You're telling me the Niners couldn't offer up Ross Dwelly or Charlie Warner in a potential offer for C.J. Henderson? And I guess I don't know how good C.J. Henderson really is. I mean, after all, the Jaguars were 0-12 in games that C.J. Henderson started. How much of an impact a cornerback makes on wins and losses? Arbitrary, but when you look at the cornerback play that the Niners have, have kind of been working to develop, Obviously, we know it can always improve, and the only way it really improves is by continuously bringing in guys with talent. At least C.J. Henderson would be a top first-round talent as of a couple of years ago. Stephon Gilmore, you mentioned him, veteran, banged up. And the only pushback that I've really seen that makes sense is you're telling me the Niners are going to pursue a guy with an injury history at a position in which they're experiencing injuries. Okay, I'll hear you out on that one. But I think we both kind of agree and speculate that Stephon Gilmore's injury may have had a little bit to do with his contract, or at least the nature of him getting the surgery when he did. There was a little bit of a holdout. There was a lot of things going into Stephon Gilmore not playing for the New England Patriots at the start of the year and refusing to suit up for them um, at points. He did have a nice goodbye message to the fans, but I, I think that this is just a move that the Niners have to be more aggressive in making. I think we've seen this from the Niners over the last couple of years that there have been names out there that the Niners could get. And every time that they take a little bit more of hesitancy, it puts them behind in the division because you you're in a division with aggressive teams. That's the problem. The Rams, they don't hesitate when a guy like this comes available. Look what they did when Jalen Ramsey became available. They decided we're going to go up there. We're going to trade the picks to get him. They were aggressive when it came to trading for Trey Lance and obviously I'm for it, but they're taking a patient approach with him. You can't play aggressive, patient together. You have to go all in on some of these moves, especially because you're trying to tell me that you're a contender and you still can contend in the NFC West this year. You're not dead. You're two and two, not making a move like this or not pursuing a move like this more aggressively, especially when you find out the end result was a six round pick is disappointing because it doesn't tell me you're a win now team. It, it doesn't project that onto the fan base. And I love what guys like Demon Lenore, Emmanuel Mosley can bring to this team from time to time. And eventually as well, in the case of Lenore, I think his long-term potential is definitely there. But I'm worried about 2021. And I think Stefan Gilmore would have been a huge acquisition for them when he is ready to come on the field. And for anybody trying to give pushback on trying to sign a guy like Stefan Gilmore, we signed Josh Norman three weeks ago. <laughs> that should tell you the dire need that we have at the cornerback position um, after guys just started going down. We need as much help as we can and at that position, particularly. And then you, men you mentioned it. 
yes, he did get injured. And the timeliness of when he decided to have that surgery 100% had to do with the contract disputes that he was having with New England. Uh, Bill Belichick runs a type ship there. He doesn't like to spend money on guys that he expects to be with the team no matter what. And Stefan Gilmore just wasn't buying it. The guy wanted to get paid and he didn't get paid by New England. That's basically why he didn't play with New England, you know, a lot of last year and then this year as well. So I, I think people are, are kind of looking at it as if why would we waste more on a guy that could potentially get injured at this point? anybody could get injured on the 49ers team. You know, it doesn't really matter as long as we the water boy, the it. towel boy, they're not the safe. Towel boy. I mean, we have a kicker injury. We have yeah. Joey Sly. And should we make one. a whole different video for Joey Sly? We're probably not, but I'm just saying that's how bad this pervasive, this injury history is for the Niners. <laughs> right. And that the secondary position probably saw the most beat up out of anybody at this point of the season. I mean, heck, I mean, us, us fans aren't probably safe for the injury bug either. So be careful out there, guys. No, speaking of the fans not even being safe. Yeah, my high ankle has started to act up a little bit recently. I don't know what that's about. It probably only acts up when you wear Niner gear. You wear a Niner shirt and that ankle is just not going to do well, man. I, I mean, that's how bad the, the injury situation has gone with the Niners that it seems like every single week we have guys just going down. And Stefan Gilmore would have 100% helped the secondary situation. Anyway, Niners faithful, I mean, there's only so much we can harp on this point. I think it's a disappointment that we weren't more involved in this discussion as it went and how fast it moved after the announcement of the release. But it's done. It's over. Again, put your Photoshop tools away for the time being. Leave a like on this video in the meantime, because obviously helps us in the algorithm. Again, thank you to our new subscribers. We've been seeing an influx of new subscribers lately. We're glad you guys are along for the ride. There's 49 reasons to listen. And Juju Talk Sports, Jose Corral, we'd like to think we're two of them. We will see you on the next one.